All right, welcome to project number one. So this is the moped build. This is a 1977 Samadhi city bike that has been uh, pretty heavily modified. Um, I got this thing way back in 2018, about half a country away. Um, and that's when I started fiddling with this. Uh, at that point in time, I added this top cross rail, um, as well as I rebuilt the engine. So there's all new bearings and bushings in the engine itself. Um, but I never actually got it running again afterwards. So there were a few issues kind of right off the bat. Um, mainly, the way this engine works is it has a slip disc clutch. So when you pull the starter clutch, it turns a half round that presses a ball bearing actuated starter plate into the clutch to engage the clutch and actually get it to fire. That clutch plate is slipping in this particular moped. There's a couple reasons why that could be. Um, you know, you, you could be the ball bearing and the clutch plate was bad. The wear plates, you know, were too short. You know, they, they're, they're too slippery. They're not sticking. There's a number of things. Um, so we're going to take a look at that. But also, this is the original um, 49cc version of this motor. Um, and I have a kit for, you can see it right back in there, the Polini kit. So that's an 80 millimeter, sorry, an 80 cc engine conversion kit for this bike. So that's the big part of what, we'll be, what we will be doing today. We're going to take this off. We're going to put the new 80 cc top end on. So that's a new piston, new cylinder, new head. Um, in addition to that, we're replacing the carburetor. Uh, the old carburetor is not on here right now. It's floating around back here. So this is the original Motori Minarelli, right? This came off. This thing uh, is a Samadhi city bike, so it has a Minarelli V1 engine on it. The pedal start version, of course. You can see the, the pedals right here. Um, but yeah, so we're going to start by taking this top end off and you know, we will get cranking. Uh, this first video is just going to be the mechanical portion of the build. So I'm going to be taking that off. We're going to run cables. I've got, I'm like halfway into changing the cables on this thing. Like it's, I, I've really left this unfinished. So, right, the goal for that is we're going to get the, the physical mechanical portion done today. And next video, we'll get gas in it and we'll start messing with timing and tuning and everything. Sound good? All right, I'm gonna stop talking. And we'll start do start doing. What did they do to you? I recently moved across the country, and when I did so, uh, I paid a moving company to handle this, and they just absolutely mangled this poor thing. Man. Okay. Pair of pliers to get that wrist pin out. Man, that is in there. Just getting rid of the high spots there. There's an old gasket. Now, when a, there's a case gasket that runs between the two halves. It was sitting just a little bit proud right there, so I just came in and knocked it down. So it'll hopefully help this base gasket seat a little bit better when we put the new one on. Thank you. 
So I'm rifling through parts to get everything set up. Uh, this is that starter plate I was talking about. So when you actuate this half lever up here, it turns a piece that pushes this in. Um, but what happens is either these plates get worn down such that they aren't gripping onto the clutch or the ball bearing gets wore out and it's not turning, right? So you get too much friction and it doesn't work. So this is what I was looking for. Um, when you're putting on gaskets, like these, these cloth gaskets like this, you want to wet them down with a little bit of oil first. Uh, helps them, because these work, you know, they sort of swell up and that helps them basically makes them more plastic, helps them seal better. So you always want to wipe these down with just a little bit. You don't need much, um, but it certainly helps the, uh, the gasket seal. All right, see that? I mean, it's really not much. Just enough so it's like shiny, a little bit wet. And then we can wipe down the landing make sure we got all the crud and all the other nonsense off of there we got our we came in earlier and we scraped those level now we just stick this guy on there We got that back. So now, the next step is to get our piston on. So this is our shiny new cylinder, replete with a shiny new piston. So we've got a couple things to do. First and foremost, so we're gonna have to put the piston rings on. So the way two-stroke pistons work is basically the piston itself doesn't fit tight enough in the cylinder to actually seal the gases, right? Like if you actually look at this, it's got some rattle to it. And that is just what allows the piston to go rocketing up and down at speed without like shearing the edges off. Um, but in order to get that seal, you have what are called piston rings. So these just sit on the outside of the piston and they're a little bit larger diameter than the piston itself, right? See that? So these are what create your tight seal against the side of the cylinder. So it reduces the friction on the side because the piston rings are a lower, like they're a much smaller surface area, right? The only, in theory, the only bearing surface that's actually on the wall is this cross-sectional width here. Um, additionally, when you're putting piston rings on, uh, they're pretty nice here. So you've got these little pins in the side. So you see those? These little itty bitty pins. So that's where you're supposed to gap your ring. You see that when you you got like a half circle there? So that's where you're supposed to gap these rings, right? So this guy just lining that up there. Additionally, when you're orienting the piston to go into the cylinder, they're kind enough to put a little arrow here. And I'll need to double check this, but I think that arrow points to the exhaust port. These have this little ridge on the inside, so we're just going to come in and just set that into that groove on the inside. Make sure 
sure we're nice and well seated. And then we can sneak in here. Got to come in between here. All right. All right, that goes in there. All right, just like that. Our piston is on. So now we just got to come in with our second clip. clip. We're seated in, we're prepped. Now we just got to make sure our piston rings are aligned with the with the seating pins before we go and try and compress them down. Otherwise we might run into problems there. Uh, but now we are just going to put some more of that oil on the inside here. And then, once we oil up the outside of this and get a little oil on the inside of this new cylinder, we're just going to squeeze these down and just work our cylinder back. Alright, so we got the piston cylinder on, or the top end cylinder. So we verified, so at top dead center, we have our exhaust port down below is closed, right? You can't, that cylinder is blocking. And our top port, we can get in behind the piston. So the way this works is there's a transfer port. You can actually see it, it's this boss right here. So as the piston travels through its stroke, it begins to contract and if you look in here, so the first thing that gets exposed is the exhaust port. You can barely see my finger in there. Um, and as it continues to draw back, if you look on the side here, the transfer port is gonna show up here in just a moment, all right? You see it on the other side there too. So it gives a chance for the gases to exhaust out. And then once they've exhausted out, the force of that piston going backwards compresses the gas mixture that was drawn on, drawn in on the backside, it then pushes it through that boss and into the ignition chamber so you can begin the upstroke again. All right, so we know we're, we're set up correctly there. Our arrow is pointing to our exhaust port. We're good. So now it's time to put the head on. Uh, so the head uses one of these little crush gaskets. It'll go right there. Uh, obviously, you can't just stick it there, it'll just fall off. But the head has a recessed ring going around the outside of it that you can just set this gasket in. And then, if you're careful when you're mating it up here, you can slide it up, and that gasket will just be captured between the, the two pieces. So I've just gone and I've filled my, my deep socket completely full of nuts and that way I can just sort of come in here and that first nut will go on there and then I can come in on the back side here, get my next washer on and do the same thing. This is why it's important to have two of them. So otherwise, you'll get you'll get it cocked off to the side. This is the same reason why when you're torquing your tires on, you don't just go in a circle around the outside. It's important that you sort of go across, because uh, that's the that way it'll actually sort of level the the forces. It is absolutely pouring outside. <laughs> 
So that's why we're working inside today. Uh, I'm just getting in here. I'm taking the bolts off of the old carburetor so we can use these bolts to mount up the new carb on the new cylinder. All right, so we've identified a problem here. Not sure if y'all can see that very well, but there's a gap. The, uh, you can probably see it there. Maybe, maybe you're just like getting blinded. We'll see in post. Uh, but it's not compressing on the side. So basically we're trying to torque it down and there's not enough clearance. So this pipe that was specifically stated to work with this moped doesn't work. Uh, just a little unfortunate, but we will we'll figure out how to make that work. Uh, but basically it's running into the frame before you can torque it all the way down. So I'm gonna have to figure something out uh, for that. <laughs> Uh, and we will sort of see what we come up with. All right, so after the failed heat bending attempt, I just came in and peened a flat right there with a hammer, and that sets up right where it runs into the frame. So I think we've got it to where I can actually get this in now. And it didn't actually cost all that much cross-sectional area, so I'm not too worried about the effects on performance from it. I mean, really... It's better than not having a carburetor at all, although I'm probably going to end up having to fix this paint at some point. It sucks. It was a really pretty piece of powder coating work. It just doesn't fit. So we made it work. Let's get it on. All right. We got her on there. And the gasket is compressed on both sides. Looking good. We even got a little, little bit of clearance in there. All right. So next step would be to mount the carburetor, um, but I don't have the jets for the carburetor, so uh, I'm going to hold off for now on mounting the carb. All right, so I'm working on this one right now. So this is my clutch cable, right? This is the clutch. So all I'm doing is I'm pulling it tight from this side so that that cable seats into the housing there and it seats into the housing here, right? And as long as it's set in both those places and I tension it here, we'll be good. All right, we got that guy tightened down. So now when we pull this, we are actuating our clutch. All right. So we've got, just to recap, We've changed, we've got a new cylinder. We've got a new carb mount, intake. We've got a new head. We have run the cables and we've got our properly tensioned clutch cable, front brake and rear brake. Uh, so now all that's really left is uh, to make sure we've got our clutch plate set up the way we want to. We are missing, so I, I've, I knew about this beforehand, but I'm missing one of the clutch case bolts. Um, so I need to make, probably order those when I order the carb jets. Um, so we'll, I'm probably not gonna do much with the clutch casing side. I think we'll just be okay with the progress we've made today. Uh, when I get those jets and the missing bolt, um, we'll come back, we'll mount the carburetor, and we'll hopefully take her up for a spin. How's that sound? Uh, thanks for joining me, everybody.